Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated, and please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Here's to the crazy moments. The insanity giggles. Guests who have hung out with us so long, their cell phones died. To our fellow podcasters. To the thousands of emails. To the millions of downloads. To the people who have listened since show number one. We thank you for carrying us with you. Where a few people go. Taking our voices. To the ends of the earth. Sharing our disgust and our fascination. To the cookies, cakes, and art. To the candy you have sent us from all over the world. For the time you invest in us. From the bottom of our duck holes. To the top of our anime collections. We thank you for the hour. Hours, days and moments. What's Reesh? What's Bank? Well, you know who to thank. It's Ellen and the boys. So let's all make some noise. The yakking never gets old. It rocks me to my duck hole. They bring all the otaku to the yard. An otaku generation, they rock hard. Otaku generation, show. Otaku generation, show. Otaku generation show. Welcome to show 784, and uh, we're into June now. We're well into June. Uh, oh, actually, this is, uh, I guess, will technically be our 15 years. Oh, wow. Um, we, uh. we in like, in a few days, are going to hit our, our 15. And actually, let me quickly check the calendar. Uh, where does, uh, yeah, Monday, on Monday we hit 15 years old, so wow. I guess technically this will be the 15th year show. We are not going to okay. do a 15-year recap, we've been just podcasting for awfully a long time, and uh, surprisingly there's still an audience, which is interesting. Uh, sure. Thank you all who have been hanging around, um, and fairly substantial, I mean not not tiny little nothing audience. You know, you guys are just mostly silent. That's all. <laughs> uh, with that said, hi, hello, everyone. I'm Alan. I am Matt. I'm Bryce. Yeah, and we have no Paul this week. What's Freesh? What's Bang? What's Squeak with the OG crew? Indeed. Well, we're 15 years old. Uh, before I forget, uh, there is a new Kyle and Luke that came out on Sunday, so go all check that out. Um, yeah, so 15 years old. Crazy. Um, so what have I been doing? What have I been up to? A uh, couple things. Um, I started watching, uh, based on Nando's suggestion, uh, he hangs out with us in Discord, uh, and uh, he has suggested that I should check out uh, James May, Our Man in Japan. It's on Amazon. Um, mm. And I do, once I bring it up, uh, oglink.com slash 505 if you want to check that out. Uh, if you have Amazon, it's free for Prime members. Um, I don't know. It's pretty good. I'm about halfway through. There's about six episodes. They're about like, you know, that 45-minute hour a piece. Um, and he is, uh, he. if you know who James May is, he's from Top Gear. Um, oh, that James May. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they put him in Japan. And uh, he's, he's going off and doing various things. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, I... Never really watched Top Gear that much, so I wasn't like a hundred percent familiar. But I, but his face looked familiar, you know. So anyhow, I've been watching through that. I finally finished Atlantis. I started Parks and Rec. I've been enjoying that, so I'm into. I think I'm in the season two now. I've been sort of watching that uh, as my supplement since I don't have, you know, a lot of Atlantis to watch because it's all done. I basically watch all five seasons of it. Which I uh, I really do miss that series. I think a good a good sci-fi series that you can kind of count on on a weekly basis or is a is a good thing to uh, to find. And we don't we don't really currently have any of that right now. I think that's just the general kind of complaint you're always going to hear from me. So anyhow, outside of that, oh, and one more thing. Um, aside from Animal Crossing, the the game that I've been waiting for it to finally hit to a point where I can buy it, 
which I did. If anyone knows the game Factorio, uh, this is a three-dimensional game called Satisfactory. Uh, oh, yeah. I had my eyes on it for a, a little bit. I put it on my wish list, and then John let me know, or he had pointed me to a thing. Apparently, it's available now, and it's got like 10% off. Uh, you can, so you can get early access. So I spent like three or four hours playing it last night. <laughs> so, mm. so, yeah. It's on Switch, you said? It's available on Steam, actually. Oh, Steam. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, yeah I, I've heard of the game. Yeah, so I... I, I John gifted me Factorio, and I just didn't really, I wasn't really into it. I don't know. It also didn't work too well on my system. Something about it just, it just didn't like. Uh, I had played some kind of other games, but nothing exactly like this. Um, but this one is three dimensional. I don't know if I would compare it to because I really haven't played um, No Man's Sky. Basically, you're on these sort of these uh, very lush worlds or these worlds, and you, you build things. Uh, the atmosphere is pretty interesting. There's a little combat, right? So you have to you have to sort of defend yourself as you're building things. Um, but I haven't gotten past the sort of the normal standard only single weapon that you have. So it's basically hand to hand combat with like a taser thing. So, um, a Zeno Zapper, basically. So, that's it. So, I've been, uh, I played it last night. I couldn't figure it out at first. It, it took a moment to figure it out, and then uh, I restarted it. Then I got myself killed, and then I went through that iteration, and now I've, I've figured it out a little bit. Nevertheless, I was playing it. So, anyhow, um, oglink.com slash 506 if you're interested. And that's it. That's all that's really exciting from me. Matt, what about you? <laughs> Anything? Not a whole lot of novel stuff, mostly just continuing things I've discussed on previous shows. Um, continuing my rewatch of the new Doctor Who. I'm up to uh, season eight, part two. I'm still enjoying it very much. Uh, continuing to watch YouTube videos for Cities Skylines with uh, Target Gaming and Biffa. And let's see. Still finishing up my reread of Sherlock Holmes, The Martian Menace. Um, so those are sort of all the continuing things I've been doing. Sorry, nothing new to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bryce, what yeah. about you? Um, I've been doing a lot of things since uh, two yeah. weeks ago when I saw us on the show. Um, so I've been trying my best to like not just play Animal Crossing. <laughs> And I found another Switch game that I've gotten deep into. I talked about it, I think I talked about it a few weeks ago. The Xenoblade Chronicles, the Definitive Edition, which is this JRPG. Um, mm -hmm. They're usually on the Wii, and they've sort of up up. It came on the 3DS as well, and then it finally came out on the Switch a couple months ago. So mm -hmm. they sort of they've they've redone the art. The characters look much better. I think. I mean, people have the charm of the old character models, but I think they look a little crappy honestly because it was an sd system but now i'm playing on the switch and it's great uh it's a massive game it's kind of crazy to start as a wii game because like you know the wii is i was like well like 2008 2000 i think it came out in 2010 i would say the original uh xenoblade chronicles uh but i really like it it's it's a big game though i can already tell <laughs> i've already put like i've sunk like 20 hours into it i think at this point and i'm not really that far into it uh, but the world's really cool. It's like the whole world takes place on these two giant titans that basically killed each other in battle <laughs> uh -huh. and then died. And then life sprung on those titans. Like, that's the planet. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's, um, there's like this like machine people on the one planet and there's on the one titan and there's the, uh, the humans on the other uh, titan. And a lot, like a hundred years before the current events, or not a hundred years, probably like, I'm not sure how long ago, but anyway, <laughs> there was a war and the machines wanted to take over the humans, but the humans were able to fight back thanks to the power of this sword, this beam sword called the Monado that uh, was wielded by some hero back in the day and they were able to drive back the machines, but the machines are back and this new plucky anime boy named Shulk is going to be <laughs> the one wielding the Monado now and... Mm -hmm. it's cool <laughs> it's it's fun it's so the whole thing with the monado is that it also gives like it gives the user early shulk uh the ability to sort of see the future uh short term so he can sort of like try to you know change the events of what's going to happen like he sees like this one person falling to a pit of lava and he's like i'm not gonna let that happen so that's sort of the story use of it but what's cool about it is that in the actual battles like the gameplay you will see visions of like an enemy is about to like kill a party member of yours in like 10 seconds. 
and it's like a vision, you see it happen, and it's like, okay, try to prevent that. So you sort of have skills that can sort of shield your allies, or, you know, you pull r- real hard aggro onto the enemy that's going to kill that guy and kill him first, which is a really cool idea, and I, I think it works really well. Um, I can't really think of any other games that do something like this, uh, at least on an RPG sense. Uh, but it's fun. It's sort of got... It has sort of the MMO style of combat, sort of auto-attacking. It's sort of run to an enemy, you target them, and you start auto-attack. But you have a lot of skills that matter, like where you're positioned. So you have a skill that does a ton of damage from behind the enemy. So you have a party member that will draw aggro, and then you start to get behind them and hit them with a backslash. And then, hey, they take a ton of damage. Uh, but I think it's really good. I I couldn't get through the Wii version of the game. They did a lot of things to it, I guess, not just from a look standpoint, but from like a functional standpoint, like the menus are apparently much better. <laughs> and as I recall, right. I remember being like, I don't know if I can play this game for the 80 hours it will take to beat it on the Wii. It's just, it's, it's just, it's too, a little too muddy, a little too, you know, old school. I guess it's a weird way. A lot of quality of life improvements. So that's what I've been playing on the switch besides animal crossing. <laughs> Uh, which I've actually I've played quite a bit. I mean, Animal Crossing, I, I they need to add some new stuff. I'm I'm starting to peter out on Animal Crossing. I'll be honest with you. Um, I think it's uh, the release schedule seems to be the pattern that I've noticed is basically every month that they seasonally yeah. are releasing things, and then yeah, we'll little, probably yeah. get some new stuff. But unless you are fishing all day or collecting bugs all day, like all the little nuance things. There isn't enough nuance, right? There's not enough, like, new things for me to capture. It's yeah. all random when I do play. And I'm not playing, like, in the middle of the day, the work day. I'm playing basically in the evening. So um, my turn up prices have sucked, right? <laughs> and I'm only yeah. looking at one price during my whole day. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think there's some little nuance things there. And then what do you do to kind of... I'm not one of those sort of super obsessed people where, like, I got to go to every sky nook mile island and figure out how to get all the scorpions off of it. Like, to me, I'm not interested that much, you know, in those tactics. So for yeah. me, I'm not making my own little projects out of, like, things you could do, right? Outside of mm-hmm. that, I mean, I'm I'm petering out a little bit. I'm getting it. I'm doing my sort of daily stuff. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Um, I got, I got deep into the, the flower breeding, but I only have like two flowers left to get. And um, yeah. once I get them, but I think my town looks really pretty. <laughs> I put a lot of flowers in good patterns. Yeah, so I, I don't. It's worth uh, something. I, that will probably be the next thing that I do is that I'll like I'll do that. But I haven't done the breeding stuff because I don't have like a gold wa- watering can or anything like you, that. You only need the regular water can. The only thing you need the gold watering can for is the golden roses. Like oh, everything okay. else you can do just with the regular watering so, can. Just sort of like properly arrange the uh, flower colors next to each other and they'll hopefully breed what you're looking oh, for. Oh, is that how that works? Yeah. Okay, so I've noticed new flowers show up, but they're just sort of wild random flowers I haven't realized – that's how they've been yeah. breeding. Okay, got it. And every day that you water them, the probability they'll breed goes up. Oh. And so if the if it rains, you don't have to water them. But if you just water them like every day, so eventually they will breed a new flower. Uh, um, whether it be the okay. color you want, I don't know. It's it's kind of random. The genetics are a little crazy, actually. I looked up a guy. It's actually surprisingly complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so I haven't really. I just sort of been putting them all over the place. But when I redo all the the tree stuff. I'm going to take all the flowers, I'm going to dig up all the flowers, and I'm going to put them in a, like, you know, like I am going to do with the trees. I'm I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to build a flower bed. I sort of just haphazardly, you know, rim them against walls or, or whatever, or just randomly put them in places to let them be. Um, interesting. Okay, well, that's good. I didn't know how that worked at all. I thought I needed some to make some kind of gold to tools or something. So no, I mean like the, the golden tools just are have really high durability, basically. Oh, okay. So there's nothing special about your other tools or about these tools other than like they won't break as often. Like I a golden water can will last you like a week <laughs> oh, really? of watering, but like everything else, you know, breaks unfortunately really quickly. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And all I have is a golden watering can. I don't have the other golden tools. I forgot what you need to do to get those. I haven't looked it up, but Okay, so um, Anime Front, uh, besides what we talked about for the topic this week, uh, Girls Last Tour. 
this is an Amazon anime that I really, um, I'm four episodes in, and I, I'm actually really liking it. It's so this un, like an apocalypse of unknown origins has wiped out most human life and most civilization. And these two girls that are sort of just traveling through the world, it, well after it happened, sort of mm-hmm. just trying to like they're in this little tank thing and they're kind of just going along and surviving and you know just uh, trying to stay alive. But it's not too dark and it's also not too goofy. Like I was worried going into it that the anime girls were going to be like very like hyper and like yeah yeah yeah. But it's actually very mellow and I'm, I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And I, will, I want to do this as a topic at some point, but obviously and we don't have Amazon Prime, so we'll probably wait till you know we're all together again. <laughs> but um, it's it's pretty fun. It's <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> it ended up being like very interesting. And the, the most interesting part is that there's a mystery they're sort of building for the civilizations that happened before this, and sort of what happened. And I'm hoping that it gets to the answers uh, of what actually took place because there's sort of it's like this city that's sort of layered so there's like a few there's like an episode where they dedicate themselves to trying to get to the next level up to try to sort of see if there's any you know people there or any you know supplies etc and the next level when they get there there's like these weird statues of these like kind of like ghost looking people <laughs> and it's like what the hell is this <laughs> and they sort of go along uh you know trying to figure out you know was what this, to do next was this show from recent preview or no, not too recent i forget when it was uh, i forget when it was to be honest with you it's not it's, it's pretty recent though i mean if amazon picked it up let's see a second ago 2017 so about two years ago, or three oh, years okay. ago i guess yeah yeah fall is 2017 um it's based off a, a six volume manga uh, I guess the anime covers the first four volumes, so I will. I'll definitely continue watching the first four, uh, the first uh, the season of it, and then maybe wrap it up by reading it. But I, I really do like it. You know, it's it's not su- like not a ton happens, but it's still kind of interesting to watch. And you know, this sort of it's like a, like a whole episode of them. They like find a fish they've never seen a fish before. That's how weird this society has been, <laughs> and how long ago civilization occurred, <laughs> and. They're like, what do we do with this thing? And it's like, I don't know. Let's try cooking it. And they cook it and they eat it. And it's good. <laughs> it's like, all right. All right. That, that's like a third of an episode. Because like each episode is sort of broken up into like sort of thirds of like, you know, something they discover. Uh, they meet somebody actually. They meet actually the, In episode three, they meet the first person other than them that they, you've seen as a viewer. And that guy sort of gives them a camera at the end of it as a thank you because they help them out. And they sort of like are figuring out how to use the camera <laughs> for the next episode. Like, you know, and that's. It's it's fun. It's cute, um, and the, the mysteries obviously keeps me it keeps me pretty intrigued. I, I'll definitely keep watching. It's I was worried it's gonna be really obnoxious, like if they were like if they they were super cheerful, but that they, they're very mellow, and I appreciate it for that. Um, Twelve episodes, I believe, is the original is the series. On the manga front, I'm about done Demon Slayer, which is the uh, as a jump um, shonen series that. Believe it or not, ends in 205 chapters, not 10,000 chapters for, you know, other Jump series. And not because it was canceled. It's very popular. It's just the story wrapped up, apparently. And that got me to want to read it immediately because I'm OK with like a more like brief, maybe more, uh, you know, let's say faster paced Shonen series. Uh, it's about a kid who his family is killed by demons. So he joins the Demon Slayer Corpse. It sounds very generic, but mm-hmm. It goes in good directions. I've talked about it before, so I don't want to go too deep into it. But the final battle takes place. So the, sort of the final battle starts like 60 chapters from the end of the whole series. And it's been just awesome to read. It's paced really well. Uh, you know, people die. The deaths are really impactful. They just like stuff happens. And it's, there's never I have yet to read a chapter where I'm just like, that was pointless. Like, it's a very um, well paced show in a way that I think like I would say like Fullmetal Alchemist is another very well paced show in series. Uh, but this one's for Jump, which is, you know, let's be honest, like a lot of Jump series go on very, very long. <laughs> and it's interesting that they ended it after 200 chapters. Um, I recommend it for sure. It's a little, I'll say a little more violent than most uh, Jump series as far as like the graphic violence. I was actually a little bit surprised, especially towards the end. Um, people get like real messed up, <laughs> uh, especially the demons, because the demons can regenerate. So, you know, someone gets like he's slashed in half, but he regenerates. So you get to see that. But doesn't have a ton of consequence right away. Uh, but the battles are cool because I think that it does a really good job of not being sort of these... A lot of Shonen's arcs sort of go off where people like sort of pair off one-on-one and they fight and the winner is usually the good guy and they move on. Uh, this one's a little more like desperate. Like 
you know, it'll be usually like three like demon slayers versus one demon because the demons are very strong and they kind of sort of like make that work by having multiple demon slayers working against them. Mm. And I appreciate that for that. It's, it makes it more interesting combat and it's, you know, the tactics are very um, more versatile. Um, so I definitely recommend it for anybody who's in the Shonen series, um, especially because it's not that long. Also, it's a on the jump subscription service. So the whole thing is available now. They had a thing where they were, they had to like sort of catch up on the back catalog once they launched, they launched the jump service, but they, they got it all up there now. So I would say and for $2 a month, read it for sure. <laughs> it's a, it's a great deal and a really good series. I really, I'm going to finish it obviously at this point. I'm like 20 chapters away from the end. So might as well. And I guess that's it for me. Okay. Manga, uh, anime, video games, all the best things. Yeah. More than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I guess we should go on to this week's topic, which is, uh, which is Magia record. Puella, Maji, Madoka, Magica side story. I am not even going to try the Japanese title on that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, where shall we start? What do we need? Now? Have you guys seen Madoka? I actually really asked you guys this. Have you seen Madoka? The original oh, Madoka? Yeah. yeah okay, I cool. mean, we, um, uh, I don't know if we did for the show, but I definitely saw a long time ago. Uh, and I saw a bazillion AVs for it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, because the uh, anime is fairly old at this point. Like, when the anime came out, the original Madoka was like what 2010, 2011. Uh, yeah, 2011. All was I like, can so it's recall old. is that we were at least Otakon was in the BCC still. Yeah, and so. it was a number of years before we moved out from that point. So uh, the uh, the anime came out in 2011, according to yeah, record. so pretty old. I mean, yeah, we've seen a lot of series that tried to do Madoka since Madoka and kind of failed. So this is kind of like one of the first. Um, actually set in the Madoka universe, I guess, since then, which is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not familiar with Madoka Magica, we, we definitely recommend it. It's kind of a, a dark take on the dynamic of the magical girl. It like has all of the tropes of a magical girl show, transformations, cute outfits, a little animal mascot, magical battles. Everybody has sort of like their own customized power set. But it also has a, a darker downside to it, which I don't want to um, yeah. talk about too much for, for fear of spoiling Madoka Magica, because part of the, the fun of the original series is just every episode seems to reveal a little bit more of this dark universe. And it's uh, very impactful. So I would, I would definitely recommend it to, uh, to people. I've heard it uh, compared to like... Like Mendoka is the magical girl anime is like Ava might be to mech anime. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'd that's say a that's good a fair parallel. analogy. Yeah. 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 So this is a side story in the Madoka <laughs> universe. And my expectations were actually pretty low when I first started because A, it's a side story. So is it going to be that meaningful? And B, it's based off a mobile game. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. oh, I don't know about this. But having not watched the whole thing or the first season at least, um, that was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I guess the most. Um, damn anything I'd say about it is maybe it plays a little too safe for something called Madoka. <laughs> it's, you know, mm. feels a little more traditional in the magic girl sense, but still. Uh, so but it's, yeah, this is, this is a, a Madoka Magica series that doesn't have all of the, the like, just like constant one, two punch of dark revelations that, uh, that the original series has. Um, it also has a lot more characters because it's based on a, a game so part of the game i guess is that it's it's a battle game and the idea is that you you build a team of tons of different magical girls and you swap them in and out or something like that i have not played the game myself but i yeah, yeah. that sounds that's, that seems reasonable <laughs> yeah so there's there's a lot more um focus on just winning battles and sort of some battles being plot significant and some battles just being battles for having a cool battle, I guess. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell which is which as the story goes along. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's a fake out. Sometimes it's very significant. You're not really sure every time which is which. 
I mean, it sort of changed the rules a lot from Madoka in the sense that, so I guess in Madoka, it felt like the, the witches appeared and they would fight the witches. But in this one, it's a little more based around these rumors. Like, you know, there's this mm-hmm. staircase that, hey, if you write the name of you and someone you're a friend with and you walk up the staircase, you're going to hate each other forever. You'll never be together. If you try to get back together and make up, then the friend gets abducted and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, uh, so there's there's stuff that happens, which is kind of like the evil witches in uh, in Madoka Magica, but they're not specifically witches themselves. They're sort of like witch-like monsters. And they uh, just sort of go into that. Like, there's a, there's a whole other group that they sort of introduce who's trying to liberate magical girls from their fate. And I think that's where it starts to get a little more darker. Like, they do get there. It's just not very... It takes till the very last episode, like, last two episodes of the final season to, like, to become sort of the Madoka series that we expect. Mm-hmm. Um... The, the central character in this show is a girl named Iroha, and her deal is that she's a magical girl. She had her wish granted by Kyube, so she is empowered to go out and fight witches. But the weird thing is, at the start of the game, she has no memory of what her wish was when it was granted. And it's like, she asks Kyube, and even Kyube doesn't really know. Yeah. And so she's going along figuring out what was my wish and why would I want myself to forget it? Although from, from a like, you know, genre savvy point of view, if you asked yourself to forget this, you probably had a good reason, but <laughs> it comes out that she tried to cure her. She wanted to cure her younger sister, uh, Ui for mm-hmm. her illness, but no one seems to remember who she, that no one remembers that sister. Like no one, like she's the only one who remembers her and he's trying, she's trying to figure out why. Yeah. And she goes to Kamihama City, which is, you know, a place that apparently a lot of witches are gathering. The witches are stronger there. And she ends up going there and sort of, you know, at first it's not really, you know, there's territories when you're where you're a magical girl. You can't just mm-hmm. <laughs> go to someone else's territory and hunt witches there. We all need the grief seeds to keep ourselves from turning to witches or whatever. <laughs> and magical but she doesn't make your friends there. themselves with the grief seeds they collect from defeated witches. Yeah. So... Um, those, you know. But she makes friends there and ends up sort of kind of creating her own sort not creating a team, but ends up a part of a team um, mm-hmm. as th- as time goes on. And I guess, so I so I was really bummed out at the end of this first season because I didn't realize there was a second season coming. I was really mad because they don't resolve anything. <laughs> I was like, what? The-? They don't resolve anything with the younger sister. They don't, t- there's no twist. Like I had figured the twist is going to be like, oh, hey, you- it turns out she's the sister all along or something like that. And it doesn't even... Um, Disney didn't give of, you that resolution. No, and I was like, <laughs> like thirteen episodes. I'm like, f this. Like, I <laughs> I watched this for thirteen episodes. Like, let me see. The, and then I looked it up. I was like, okay, a second season coming. Okay, fine. I'll wait mm-hmm. that out. <laughs> uh, so I'm not as mad as I was when I first finished it, but still, the journey was good. I the animation style very strong. The uh, they go with the crazy look of the witches and the very mm-hmm. like abstract looks of them um that you you expect from the Madoka series and they don't really spare any expense in that way. I thought this would be maybe mm-hmm. like based off a mobile game, we'll make it budgety, but it's not really that. And they do make a good damn looking magical girl anime. <laughs> it's also uh, uh, yeah. I I'd say the quality of this is is right on par with the original Madoka series. So no no skimping in that department. The battles look cool. Um, the powers are cool. I mean, they, they really have put some thought into how the powers express um, the personalities and the wishes of the girl, which are sort of like their ultimate um, expression of personality because, you know, you're going to sign up to spend the rest of your life as a magical girl. What's the real important thing that you want to accomplish in exchange for, for basically your entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, on the other hand, since these are very young girls, sometimes these wishes are not what you would consider real world shaking things. No, uh, it's almost never worth it. That's kind of the, yeah. that's kind of the, the common theme. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's one of the, the things that happens a lot in, in this series is that you have disaffected magical girls where they're like, okay, I, got to go on a date with that boy I liked. And then we wound up breaking up afterwards. And it's like, how old were you? 10. And it's like, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, so oh, now I'm, 
going your to life of life and death battles. <laughs> magical girl risking my butt to to fight horrible psychological monsters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not. So probably not worth it. But that that's kind of the the draw for a lot of the uh, the magical girls who hear this rumor that you can get out of your magical girl gig if you go to Kamihana and they're like, well, it's, it's a rumor. It's kind of vague. The rumor came from a dream supposedly, and nobody in Kamehana knows anything about magical girls being relieved of their burdens because they've been there all this time fighting tougher and tougher witches. And they'd really love to be relieved of their burdens mm -hmm. very much. And they go into it like you do see like a, a rival group that is like trying to do this. And, you know, in some ways I kind of I kind of sympathize with the rival group. Like, yeah, like QB really fucked people over. And we should probably you know make it so that we don't have to do this anymore. And so they go down that direction. Um, but like I said, I, I, I really wish the first season like had a little more wrap up. I want to say I understand the second season coming, but like just a little something because it ended yeah. very like abruptly and it just felt very unsatisfying. Um, uh. That's it. If the second season coming, I'm fine with that. Like, yes. But like at the same time, it's, you know, there's a reason why we have seasons of things, right? Like there should be like a, you know, a good resolution at the end of the season, but then a hook to get you to watch the next season. But this was just like all just like, it might as well just been, you know, another episode ending, but there's no more episodes to watch. So it's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah. It, it's just like the normal, I like a gap between episode 12 and 13, which isn't going to exist for another two years. Or right. Something. Exactly. And so, I mean, they had 13 episodes to figure this out. So I wish, <laughs> but Hey, Mm-hmm. I still liked it though, um, more than I thought I would for sure. I mean, it it plays a little safe, I think. Um, you know, it doesn't get it doesn't go to those those depths of darkness, at least not to the very end that Madoka does. Mm. Uh, so it feels a little bit more traditional, but still, the visual style cannot be denied, and it it just it's nothing else like it, <laughs> except for the original mm -hmm. Madoka, like the way they you know make the witches, the monsters that they face. And yeah. for that, I, I think it's still worth watching for sure if you're a fan of Madoka. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree. Um, it's it's not, you know, as great as Madoka. I mean, nothing really could be since Madoka was like the progenitor of this whole universe. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's kind of like stuff that that Madoka has already done that, for the sake of good storytelling, you're not going to redo in this series, um, which kind of limits their scope a little bit. But I think they they introduce enough interesting new aspects to the universe that that they specifically are dealing with to make it it worthwhile to watch. Yeah, it does a better job then. So there was the Madoka movies they put after Madoka, where the first two were sort of condensed like condensed versions of the Soul series, and then the third mm -hmm. one was sort of like this like epilogue movie. And I thought the epilogue movie felt very just not great <laughs> was like, it did not continue the story very well in a way this thing i think it does as a side story does a better job of for sure as far as like new madoka content mm -hmm. um, so i recommend it for sure um if you like madoka i mean obviously going with expectations a little bit um you know lowered but still i don't yeah. i think it was, i'm glad i watched the first 13 episodes i'll watch the second season no question just to see what the heck happens <laughs> what the yeah, whole thing is hope. about but, <laughs> yeah um, um it, it's very upfront about what it is like right. this is a side story this is not the main madoka it's in the and title <laughs> if you judge it on that basis it's actually pretty good especially for something that's that's adapted from from a game yeah that's yeah that's the crazy part <laughs> a mobile game no less <laughs> I mean, a full-on mm -hmm. visual novel uh yeah so that's that's actually pleasantly surprising about this i mean because i mean how many times have have we bashed on this awful awful anime that were chiefly in <laughs> quickly adapted from from some turned out spin-off video game and yeah um the nice thing is about this is that despite its video game origins it it actually does seem to be a a well-handled anime so kudos congratulations yeah. to the guys who made this what did you watch it to alan you watched the first four episodes you said uh yeah five? i got it to the first four um okay i i the only kind of real major comment i was going to have is about it's visuals it uh i think they did a fairly good job of it meeting 
I wouldn't say exceeding, but meeting what they did in, in the original Madoka. So um, it looks good. It follows along that same sort of format when they go into the dream world and they fight. Um, it, there's nothing that, that compares in any anime that I can think of. Um, no. You know, in general, was Madoka my most favorite something something? Not really. Um, is this any more of that? <laughs> Definitely not. Um, is it a bad? No, I would totally recommend it. Um, what I would recommend is if you're new to Madoka in general, this is not your starting point. The original oh, no, no, series yeah, is. Yeah. No, um, definitely start with the original Madoka. Yeah. Don't just jump into this. I, and be like, well, I didn't watch the movies. If we watched them, I, the I club, wouldn't watch movies either. I would say just watch the original Madoka, then watch this. Yeah. <laughs> the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that would, you know, especially at this point where you can kind of marathon it, right? Where, yeah. you know, back in the day, you kind of. It's only 13 yeah. episodes. I mean, it's on yeah. Crunchyroll, so check yeah. it out, sure. Um, the uh, original Madoka, yeah. And this too, but yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, I would recommend it. Um, I, I'm not sure that I am. I didn't get far enough, you know, in, in my watching tonight to to feel invested uh, to want to watch another 13. <laughs> yeah. I, and the, I, I don't think the characters in this show are as strong as the Madoka cast for sure as well. Like sure. it does. Like, like there's a couple characters I like, but overall I found some of them to be kind of forgettable. Um, I suppose, well, like it's kind of funny because when you think of the original Madoka series, like it's not really that much about the character Madoka. It's about another character altogether <laughs> and her you mm. know, struggles. <laughs> and I guess I kind of get that from this in a little bit because the main character Uraha, like she, they, they she's very a very weak magical girl. That ends up like befriending strong people, <laughs> and she kind of like, I don't know, like her. It's more centered around her than it did with Madoka, I guess, in the original Madoka. Um, I, like she's okay. I, that's the thing. I don't find the characters to be as great as they were in the original Madoka, and that's and they bring in those characters every so often to sort of, I guess, you know, when it's relevant. Um, mm-hmm. Although I will say, towards the end, they bring in one character, and it's not Madoka herself that I think is like kind of out of nowhere. Like, okay, why are you even here? <laughs> but they justify <laughs> the other cameos, I think, pretty well. <laughs> but that was my. <laughs> Like it's not like don't start with this, but like if you're looking for more Madoka after you watch Madoka, I think this is a good thing to watch. Um, I wouldn't go to the movies. <laughs> That's my advice. <laughs> yeah. uh, music's good too. Um, you know the opening ending, very, very catchy. Especially the ending. I like it. Claris uh, is the artist of the ending who did the original Madoka opening, and I think that that works here as well. She's a good J popper, <laughs> if I may say. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things about this show is that it doesn't. It feels like it has its own distinct style of of incidental music. Like oh, when, yeah, the, yeah. when the witch battles or non-witch battles begin, there's always this sort of trippy otherworldly battle music that, that they fire up. And I, I really think it's distinctive and just essential to setting the tone and mood for, for battles in this sort of dreamlike alternate universe where where magical girls fight with witches. And that's yeah, the love, thing that, that the, uh, soundtrack, yeah. really, really helps the uh, the feel of the show. Yeah. It's a strong show. I, you know, I think that if you're skeptical, give it a try. I think Because mm-hmm. cool. I was too, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know about this. Like, Madoka was so great. Do we need really more of this? It, it, does, it does a better job with the Magical Girl series than, like, I think a lot of shows that, like, went super heavy on the dark stuff since Madoka to like, try to make it work. Right. Like, or to try to copycat its form. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, like it's magical same. spec ops or whatever, like magical spec ops, magic, like Oscar, whatever that <laughs> one was, or it's like a super violent, yeah. like military magical girls. I was like, eh, this is okay, I guess, but no. <laughs> yeah, you're, but, yeah. you're kind of missing like the whole, you know, tone at the, at the bottom of Madoka Magica with these kind of things. It's, it's not that it's like, grim and gritty magical girls it's kind of about how real how like baseline magical girls are, are about this sort of like utopian happy ending happy ending fantasy thing where you know young girls you know develop their their agency and and power and come into themselves by being magical girls and this one is is kind of all about how it's it's not driven through innocence. It's actually kind of driven by naivete and 
the harsh reality of of like big choices mm -hmm. that really that, that from realistic points of view you really don't want to have happen um it's it's that whole sort of dash of cold realism on the whole utopianism of the the magical girl genre and just making magical girls grim and gritty and like mean is is not the point of it yeah it's definitely missing the point <laughs> for sure so. okay um i have three links one to crunchyroll one to a wiki and one to ann oglink.com slash 4ZW, 4ZX, and 4ZY for those who are playing at home and along <laughs> with us. For all the links, uh, oglink.com slash OG, the show number, which is 784. Um, I think uh, there's not much more to be said, right? No, I think we covered it. <laughs> okay, so then um, let's, uh, let's wrap up. So... For things that we've mentioned, please visit our website, www.otakageneration.net or ognetworks.tv where we're making other shows like Kyle Luke, which came out on Sunday. Uh, so what are we going to talk about next week? Good question. You will find out when we decide <laughs> and on Wednesdays because that's, that's when we podcast. Uh, for feedback, you can always hit us up via Discord, oglink.com slash feedback. You want to become a patron supporter? You can do that too, oglink.com slash Patreon. Um, and we do have email if you want to choose that path, uh, otaku.generation at gmail.com. We've had that email address for at least 15 years. Um, <laughs> what else to be said? I don't know. Uh, we got, I guess, I guess we got a fortune. So, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, let's, let's hope this is a good one. Uh, this is, okay. Oh, this is this long. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. All right. You enjoy giving gifts of yourself to... Uh, okay, hold on. I can read this first. <laughs> Damn. I can read this out loud. You enjoy giving gifts of yourself to others. Uh, you will be rewarded. Okay. Okay. Let me reread That's that fun. again. That just makes okay. no sense. <laughs> Three, you three times a charm. Let's get it. <laughs> you enjoy giving gifts... Of yourself to others, you will be rewarded. Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't. Uh -huh. Not really. It's not really a fortune, is it? It's a vice. Would you say it's a vice? Well, is probably if you if you enjoy, or is this a in? <laughs> uh, you enjoy giving gifts of yourself to others, comma, you will be rewarded. Weird. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, I'll take your word for it. I see. I see. Um, I'll take a picture of it, and that's the end of it. All right, well. I'll give you guys a picture. Talking like <laughs> shoes here, is that what it means? Uh. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, everyone, have a good week. Hopefully, you, you stay home, you stay safe, and you stay healthy. Until then, have a good one. Bye.